and welcome to this video ladies and gentlemen this is your fellow nigerian once again breaking news folks breaking news let's break it and see what this man had to say as you can see right here explosive lagos is not yoruba land says a bar of lagos or by a i really thank god that this thing is coming out you see before i will go further there are a lot of things i would like to show you here and uh, let's see what this man had to say but i want to say this because of recent actually uh you know talk about uh what is going on in nigeria when you look at this title right here Benin city the mighty medieval capital now lost without trace um you can listen to it by yourself this one was done and uh, that was january okay because everybody actually knew what this man had to say right now it's not a revelation per se but i call it revelations because it's coming out for him direct they never want to admit it this but i think he's coming out now try to resuscitate that important history of my kind of the black people you know very important history that has been buried because of nepotism that is you know you are seen everywhere in nigeria today i, I talk about in, in that very video i talk about how the majorities today in nigeria are rewriting their their, their history backdating them in order to prove that their history is older than anyone else i mean in nigeria for god's sake you have great tribes from minorities you talk about Bene kingdom the edo people you talk about the edoma people you talk about the urubo people the calabars all these people have a lot of strong history behind them but because of what is going on today where nepotism is so visible everywhere you look at today in nigeria so they try to oppress the rest in order for them to elevate themselves but we all knew this, like I said before. What this man is trying to say today. We, we, we all knew this. That is why in that my last video, I talk about how the Bini Empire was so powerful that they have to name that city called Lagos today, Echo. There's no way if Oba or Bini didn't have influence up to that shore, there's no way he will have named that place a quote. So we are going to hear from this man right now and what he had to say about that. And like I said before, they never wanted to say this. They've been suppressing the history of a particular people just because they are minorities. That's why today you go to Nigeria, boulevards and great infrastructures are named after the majorities as if they are more intelligent as if they have done more but that is what is going on with black people the white people are not like that you see grace was admitted into the european union because of who they were very important history about greens i think was the first place you know in the bible where lawyer was first mentioned and the bible talk about how the greek seek after wisdom in Athens there when the other europeans were still living in the cave they never even know how to organize themselves the greek people we are already coming together exchanging ideas as a matter of fact uh, olympic actually came from there so they they, they, they started organizing themselves already uh, of course um uh, the whole thing started from egypt alexandra and uh, when you look at that pyramid Anyone that arrives there will pay homage to the people that are there today, even though they might not be the original uh, builders or the descendants of the builders of those pyramids. But as long as that pyramid is there where those people are today, people, whenever they arrive there, they look at these people as important people, as mysterious people. How many black people can actually, you know, we just go to the uh, ticket office and board and sell ticket and go to Egypt? To see the pyramids not many because they don't understand the importance of building of history so that is why in nigeria you see the majorities try to suppress the important history of others 
by their influence today in the political arena in Nigeria. They use that. That's why I say when you go to the Nigerian Wikipedia, you will never see anything that is factual there. Everything there are all made up. Everything there are all fake and fraud. Every major tribes there try to backdate their history. Even though when you go to every European you know, museum from Berlin to Paris, Paris to Lisbon, Lisbon to London, you are not going to see any single document that talk about how they arrived in Nigeria and they meant building some organized society, organized empire, other than what they have written about Benin Empire. They talk about, a Portuguese man talk about how they arrived in Benin there, you know, they, they saw architectural work, bronze work, much more advanced even than the uh, the, you know, the European types. They talk about how everything were, were arranged there. When you listen to this, if you want to go back to it and listen to it, there are a lot of messages there and videos. Okay? I'm, I'm so oh, sorry right here. Let me pause it. There are, there, there are a lot of things here you can learn. How the Portuguese arrived there and what they saw and what they have written about the Benin Kingdom or the Benin Empire. The houses were already being erected there. There's no other tribe in Nigeria. They have written about the way they done about the Benin Empire. So now, this man is coming out right now to say, look, you know, Lagos, a coal, is not a Yoruba land. Because we know of recent, he was having some quarrels with the uh, owner of FIFA. Now, we don't know what's going on between them. I mean, the relationship between two of them has been cranky. So, uh, he coming out now to say, look, you don't have to come here to control me. You are under me as I am under the Benin Empire because my parents came from Benin. I mean, we are going to read further uh, as I stroke down. Uh, let's listen to what this man had to say. That Lagos, like I said before in my previous audio, that there is no way above Benin could have influence to name that place or whether he saw, according to what this man is going to say, that it was the son, Prince Ado, that actually named that place Echo. So, but there was tremendous influence because if your son named a place, the father had much more influence than his son. All the way to the shore of Lagos, that the party Jews, when they arrived in that territory, there was no president then, there was no country. So the party Jews, when they arrived from the shore of Lagos, they probably asked people there, or asked the man, the man that the all by there, who came from Benin, according to what this man is going to say here. Who is in charge here? They say, it's my father. Where is the seat of power? So they took them. They took the power just down to the Benin uh, kingdom, right there in Benin city, to the Oba Palace. And they came there to pay homage. So they have a lot of documentation that they have done concerning what they saw there. Great building, great architectural work. Nothing like that was written about any other tribes in Nigeria. Okay? Go to every museum all over the world. You see, I talk about even the bead. Uh, uh, it's not this type of bead. I think mean, this is okay. This is a little bit rand. But people going around, walking around, organizing their traditional marriages, wearing the Benin bead. If you are not from Isha, if you are not from Benin, if you are not from even, uh, you know, Yoruba people, all the way to where good Lord Jonathan came from, you don't have right to wear bead, organizing your traditional marriage. Because you are telling people that's who you are, even though that's not who you are. That's why I love what, uh, you know, Buhari's daughter have done during her marriage with, with, with another guy there of recent. She wore those traditional Fulani, you know, costume. She never go around and try to say, this is who I am, wearing beads, even though that is not who she is. Only a fool can be messing around like that. Okay? So, we are going to hear what this man has to say here. Because even though we all know this, okay, but like I said before, if he was not having some crimes now with the owner of Ife, 
I don't think he will come out to say this. So let's see what he have to say here. I would like to stroke down. Let, let's actually hear from him. Because we see now, you know, that dog life is coming to the thrones of others and, and the chiefs in Nigeria today. They, they are almost like the Nigerian politicians. And uh, Odeon Fife is destroying people's houses and claiming their lands. Uh, probably that is what uh, infuriated this man. You know, that he shown him the other day, and uh, only on Fifa arrived home and said, I'm going to send you something, uh, turn down to whatever. And uh, I think uh, there was fire in his house. The, what I was seeing yesterday, I don't know. But hey, I digress. Let's move on here. Uh, let's see what he had to say. Coming from the palace with what I was told by my late paternal mother, who is a descendant of Oba Ovorawe Nobasi. Also reading from the factual historical book. Okay. It's now you know. Let me share this knowledge with you. Or uh, uh, a co-Lagos. Modern day Lagos was founded by Prince Ado, the son of Oba of Benin. Prince Ado was the first Oba of Lagos. Right here. The son of Benin King, Prince Ado. Named the town Eko until the Portuguese explorer ruled the Sequera. Changed Maritime Town to Lagos, which at that time from 1942 was Portuguese Expedition Center down to African coast. It was a major center for the slave trade until 1851. Lagos was annexed by Britain via the Lagos Treaty of Sension in 1861, ending the consular period, starting the British Korean period. The remainder of modern day Nigeria was seized. In 1886, when the colony and protectorate of Nigeria were established in 1941, Lagos was declared its capital due to the struggle of Benin King. I, I don't know why I call it King. Is it King? Okay, let's move on here. Lagos experienced grow pro to the British colonial rule and even more rapid growing during the colonial rule throughout the 1960s or to 70s. Continued through the 80s and 90s to date, thanks to the Awori Benins, Yorubas, migrants across the nation and the world at large, as no particular group of people can take the glory alone. You see, that is what I have been saying. Lagos is no man's land. You have the Chinese, you have everyone from all over the world who arrive in Lagos and build that place. So, but when you see the governorship candidates now, they have to be Yorubas. Their ministers and his cabinets have to be Yorubas. You see? But even though this man is coming out and saying, look, that place is not actually belong to Yorubas. Okay? You see, that is the tribal influence and the nepotism that has ruined Nigeria that you are seeing there. I mean, as you can see now, we are hearing from the upper direct saying that no particular group of people can take the glory, even though the first Oba of Lagos was from Benin, was the son of the king of Benin, according to what he said here. But I've told his story with the Oba, like he said here, modern day Lagos was founded by Prince Ado, the son of the Oba of Benin. But here they're talking about king. I don't know whether they even know the difference between king and Oba. Okay? Uh, because I read something here talking about uh, declare the capital due to the struggle of Benin kings. I don't understand that. I think he was talking about the Oba of Benin. Lagos is made up of lagoons and creeks. The Lagos Lagoon, Lagos Harbor, five known creeks, Ebutemeta Creeks, Port Novo Creeks, New Canal, Badagri Creeks, Kuramo Water and Lighthouse Creeks. The Awori and Benins are known to be the first settler of the Eco land. The Awaris are speakers of distinct dialect close to that of Yoruba language with a rich Benin mixture. Traditionally, Awaris were found in Ilefe. They were known to be the Benins who followed their self as a prince, the first son of Ojiso, now called Oba, of the Benin kingdom, whose stepmother was after his head. The Ezra Benin prince is Odua, known to the Yorubas as Odua, Odudua, was made the ruler of the Ife people due to his powers. And follow up from the great Bini Kingdom. 
Isodua, which is Odua, was made the first king of Ilefe in 1230 AD. His followers from his father's kingdom in Benin are the today's Awari people who settle in a co now called Lagos. There are a lot of things you I, I don't want to go further, but what this man is trying to say here, you can read it the rest by yourself, you can Google it. Do you know, I mean, there are a lot of factual stories here that has been suppressed that were hidden in the dark. Do you know, if he didn't have trouble with only of Ife, all these things would have come out. Okay, but the bottom line is that you can read the whole thing, it's very complex. Okay, the bottom line is that the final of that place, as you know, it calls a Bini language. The first Oba there actually came from Benin. Uh, the man went down to say that, uh, you know, there's something I want to show you here. He said, the Oba of Benin was head of the Benin Empire, which are present day Western, Southern, and Eastern modern day Nigeria. The king never obliged anyone to speak the Benin language as he believed everyone was entitled to their own choice of language. So right here, about 1450 AD, some Yorubas, you know, Yoruba has never been mentioned before. You talk about the Awori people, you talk about the Benin people. Now, some Yorubas in 1450, who have from Esheri in Ogun, which Ogun state and Ekiti were allowed by the king to settle in Eko during a war. They came in very large number, thereby surpassing the numbers of Awaris and the Benins. Hence, Yoruba claim to owe a code due to their numbers. This is what I'll be saying. This man is just telling the truth now. Numbers can't in Nigeria. Not history, not facts. As long as you are majorities, you are better than anyone else. But that is why you see things are not working in Nigeria. You come to Western world. You see uh, minorities. You go to Germany, you see the Bayan people, they are minorities. You know, Mr. Obama wouldn't have been a president in Nigeria. No minority would be voted for to rule Nigeria. You know, good Lord Jonathan was so lucky that uh, his boss died. He have, he have to take over the office. But that is the problem Nigeria have. There are a lot of things I would like to show you here as we go further. Right here, as you can see right here, Oba Akintoye. You know, I don't know how you arrive here, but I don't want to, because it's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, things that you need to read here. But, however, Oba Akintoye of Lagos was the first Oba not to be buried in Benin. Prior to this, all the kings of Lagos, which is all the Oba of, of Lagos. I mean, I don't know who is writing this. He's talking about Oba, he's talking about kings. Kings and Oba is different. You don't translate Oba to be kings. They are not kings, okay? Prior to this, all the kings, which is all the Obas, were buried in Benin. All the Obas in Lagos, whenever they die. They pass on taxes to the Oba of Benin until the British settle in Lagos. That's what I was saying before. They all have to pay homage to their grandfather there in Benin Kingdom. Until today, the Oba of Lagos is the head of all the Obas in Lagos. Because of the Benin belief that Whatever they or their offspring are, they are seniors. The statue of the Oba of Lagos is different from other Obas, most of whom were giving back their crimes and staff of office only within 40 years ago. Not so long ago. Those who got their lands back was the original landowners, and they were mostly descendants of Prince Ado and other children of Olofi. So uh, we see the whole things here. Okay, uh, like what this man said, the power of Oba was stretched all the way to the southern area. Uh, let me show you something here, like what we read here before, that the Oba of Benin was the head of the Benin Empire, which are present day western, southern, eastern modern day Nigeria. Okay, the Oba never obliged anyone to speak Benin language. He allowed people to speak that language. Um, that actually show up when you look at where you know during our you know our generation what we have meant where Oba was still controlling the the Bende uh, territory uh, you can see that uh, Urubu was still speaking the language and everything even though he was the one have to uh, install those kings there I think this might say the truth and this is what I want to talk about thank you very much for listening for watching this 
uh, it's good that we have to bring out the truth all the time. The truth must be told.